Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 9. As you know, the GED Math Test consists of several parts, an arithmetic part, applied um, arithmetic and basic, algebra and geometry. So in this test, we're going to do a few questions of each of these categories. And the whole point of doing this is just so that you keep that knowledge um, and those skills uh, fresh for your test. So without further ado, uh, let's get started with those basic arithmetic questions. So today we're going to do a few uh, decimal drills. Okay, so the first question involves adding decimals. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and try to add these decimals. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and this is the explanation for the answer. So to add these decimals, we would just, um, you know, line them up as you usually would, 1.27. And then we have a five. Um, and here, what you have to remember is that when you have a whole number, if you want to make it into a decimal, you would just say 5.00 or 5.0. Okay, so that's how you make it into a decimal. And then you have 3.09. All you do is add these three numbers together and it gives you 9.36. Okay, so that's all there is to adding decimals. The second question is a little bit trickier, especially if you're not using a calculator because uh, it's a division problem and that always is a little bit scarier. So they're telling you to divide 40 divided by 0 0.5. Okay, so the trick here is um, to move the decimal point until you get a whole number, okay? So in this case, we would say instead of 40 divided by 0 0.5, we would say 40 divided by five. Okay, and you can see that that is much more manageable right, <laughs> right now, okay? Because 40 divided by five is eight, which is much easier. But don't forget that you move the decimal point, okay? So you have to take care of it now. So it's not eight, the answer would be 80, okay? So you can uh, double check that with your calculator. If you divide 40 divided by 0 0.5, it's going to give you 80. All right. So question three is an applied arithmetic uh, problem. And it reads, a bus from New York City to Boston travels at a speed of 72 kilometers per hour for four hours. How many kilometers did the bus travel? All right. So Go ahead and pause the video if you can and try to do it. Okay, so this is a rate problem. And the way that you know that is because when they give you rate problems in the GED, they usually use the word per. So you'll see per kilometer, per hour, etc. Um, ideally, if you remember this formula, it's going to help you out a lot. So rate times multiplied by time is equal to distance or rate is equal to distance divided by time. If you remember that, as I said, it's going to be very simple because all you have to do is to plug in the numbers in your equation, um, in your problem into the equation. So in this case, they're telling us that you're traveling at a rate of 72 kilometers per hour for four hours. So all you do is plug that into your equation and you have 72 times four, which is going to give you 288. Question four is an algebra problem. And this is a polynomial, which they love to put in the GED. And it looks very scary, but it's actually very simple if you have a method that you follow step by step. Okay, so it says, which of the following is equivalent to the expression 3x minus 12 plus x squared minus 4x? All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to change gears here, and we're just going to show you a method of how to solve this. So the method that I use to solve polynomials is called the FOIL method, FOIL, where FOIL, uh, where the F for FOIL stands for first. So let's say that you have these two expressions, okay? You would multiply the first term in each of your uh, parentheses, okay? In this case, 5x multiplied by 2x, giving you 10x squared, then the O of FOIL stands for outer, so you multiply the outer terms, 5x multiplied by 20y, which would give you 100xy. Then you look at the I, which stands for inner, and you multiply those inner terms, y 
times 2x, giving you 2xy. And finally, the L, which stands for last. And here you're going to multiply the last terms, um, which are y multiplied by 20y. And that gives you 20y squared. And the, just the final step would be to clean your equation up a little bit. So you would add those uh, two terms in the middle. So instead of having 10x squared plus 100xy plus 2xy plus 20yx squared, you would simplify to uh, this. Okay, so now that you know the FOIL method, why don't you go ahead and pause the video and try to solve this um, polynomial. Okay, so hopefully you took the time to do this um, problem out, and the correct answer is B, and let's work through it together. So we said that the first thing that you do is that you multiply the first numbers. In this case, it would be 3 multiplied by x, giving you 3x. Second step, look at the outer terms. Okay, so in this case, the two outer terms would be 3 multiplied by minus 4, that gives you minus 12. The i, remember, stood for inner. So in this case, we have x multiplied by x. That gives you x squared. And then the l stands for last. And in this case, we have x multiplied by minus 4, giving you minus 4x. OK, so you see if you follow this step, you know, four step um, process, it is going to be very simple for you to figure out these polynomial questions, okay? Which I appreciate look very intimidating. Okay, so questions four and five are geometry problems. Joe wants to fill his rectangular pool with water. The dimensions of the pool are 10 feet long, 7 feet wide, and 5 feet deep. How many cubic feet of water does he need? All right, so this is essentially what they're telling you, okay? This is kind of what the pool looks like. So it has these three dimensions, depth, width, and length. And what they're asking you is how much water or what volume of water does he need to fill the pool? So for all of these formulas, they will be provided for you in the GED. But as always, you have to understand what you're doing. Otherwise, you're going to waste time. So the volume of a rectangle, you simply multiply these three dimensions. So you will multiply the length times the width times the depth. And that's going to give you the amount of water of cubic feet that you need to fill that pool. So in this case, they give us th these dimensions. 10 feet long, 7 feet wide, and 5 feet deep. All you do is multiply those three terms, and that gives you 350. All right. The next question is a question on triangles. And uh, this triangle, as you can see, is not drawn to scale. OK, so I just made up those, those uh, angles just to kind of make it a little bit harder. Um, and it says, for the triangle below, find the missing angle. And it's giving you uh, one angle, which is 35, one angle, which is 57, and one angle that is x. And here, the most important thing is not to panic, all right? And to remember that when you look at a triangle, all the angles of the triangle, regardless of what triangle we're talking about, add up to 180 degrees. So with that knowledge, it's now going to be very easy for you to solve this problem. OK, because we said that all of these angles, right? So 35 plus 57 plus x, which is the angle that we don't know, should equal 180 degrees. So if we go ahead and clean this up a little bit and add 35 plus 57 on the left side. That will give us 92 plus x. And now all you have to do is isolate that x. So how do you do that? Well, you have a positive 92. So if you want to get rid of that 92, what you would do is subtract 92 or, okay, or add a negative 92. And you have to do this on both sides. Okay, so negative 92 plus positive 92 on the left side is going to cancel out. And then you end up with 180 minus 92. And that gives you 
x is equal to 88. So if you go ahead and just add those three angles, so 88 plus 35 plus 57, it should give you 180 degrees. All right, folks, uh, so that's letter uh, answer B in this case, um, and that's it for us today. I uh, hope you found that useful. Thank you so much for your time and for watching. Have a terrific day. Stay positive and stay strong. You're doing a great thing for your future. Take care.